My name is Godfrey Cambridge. This film is dedicated to Chirilio Perez, age 15, who died of a narcotics overdose in New York City. And to Clifford Robinson, age 13, who died in New York City of acute spinal meningitis caused by an unsanitary hypodermic needle and a narcotics overdose. Most of us are addicts living in an addicted society. From the cradle to the grave, you are taught not to deal with stress, problems, anxiety, troubles, or worries. Instead, we are told in the media to get fast, fast relief. Take a pill. If you're feeling depressed, to get relief, take a pill. Take it whether it's for colds, backaches, or anything. Take something, and it will go away. It usually doesn't but it does cause a lasting habit pattern. So it's easy for us to become victims of drug pushers because when it comes to drugs, pill pushers and takers, we are a country virtually out of control. Doctors write too many prescriptions for drugs that really won't solve our problems. Druggers fill too many of these kinds of prescriptions. Pharmaceutical manufacturers make and sell too many of these products and only recently have some steps been taken to control such production. Finally, it gets down to the adult professional drug pusher who gets his narcotics illegally and sells it illegally. He may be an adult, or he may even be your own son or daughter who swipes them out of your medicine cabinet and sells them to others in his group for kicks, money, or prestige. The young pusher may sell them through all his schools, from elementary through college, till it may become his profession, whatever the source. It always ends the same. A kind of drug roulette game where a few of the players seem to win. Most end up in prison or on a morgue slab with a DOA dead on arrival tag. So if you play around with drugs, remember, dead is dead. So if you play around with drugs, remember, dead is dead. Churio Perez and Clifford Robinson were close friends of mine. They died ugly deaths. Other people have seen their friends die. I don't want anyone to see any of their friends die anymore. Now are people with a different relation. Black and white, yellow, red and blue. All in the same band, we know it's true. They just stone jacket, stone, stone jacket. Don't let your mind become offended, Miss Lady. Cause you ain't no better than, than our typical Sadie. You just got money, you can spend out at will. But when come aches and pains, you still use the pill. I don't mean nothing. Stone junkie, stone, stone junkie. This is cold turkey, the abrupt withdrawal from heroin or barbiturates. This is the sickness, the terror, the pain of addiction. This is the agony of beating death. It's a hard and lonely fight. Very, very few addicts win the battle. Could this be you, a friend of yours, your child? I know it's been refilled four times, but I need it. Well, I, I can't sleep since my husband died in Vietnam. Not without a prescription from your doctor. It's the law. Please, look. Just two, two and all for tonight, huh? Uh, call my doctor. He'll verify.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Doc. He said two only, and he'll mail the prescription tomorrow. Thanks. I, I, I really can't sleep. I still see him in the flames when his plane went down in Vietnam. Hey, my man. I like a refill on some of these good-doing, righteous diet pills. They make me lose weight, and I feel good. And I really dig it. Two 15-milligram dexatrine spancers twice a day. But you're only allowed one more refill on this prescription. Then we need a new prescription. A refill? You got it, my man. Some of that cough medicine you gave me last week, you know, it's good for my throat and really made me feel good, too. There's codeine in it. Now, be careful. Yeah? My mother needs this. It's for her period. When she has it, she has cramps. Hendrasol. Second refill? Oh, hurry up, mister. If she doesn't get her medicine, she's going to be beating on me. We're going to conduct a one-minute test. We're going to ask you a couple of questions. How many of you out there in that audience tonight have within your possession legally obtained drugs that which, if misused, could be dangerous or have fatal results? Think about it. Think about it. 22 seconds. Second question. How many of you out there know that your kids have seen you take all kinds of pills? Think about it. It's your kid. That's 40 seconds. Last question. Only 15 seconds left. What kind of hypocrite must your kids think you are when you tell them don't take pills or drugs? I hope you thought about it. I hope you really thought. In the old days, we had jars filled with candy. Today, there's a new kind of candy, pills, of all kinds, from qualudes to horse tranquilizers to who knows what. And that's the problem. Young people all over the country are eating these pills like candy, with no knowledge of what they are or what they will do. Abuse, they can cause enormous damage to the brain, heart, and body organs and often death. This is the new candy. It's dynamite, and it's killing a lot of people. We don't have that kind of problem where we live. It's in the cities, you see, where the environment... Look, lady, you better start counting your nematols and your dexies. Found any pills missing lately? Or maybe you're one of those housewife junkies. Takes a little amphetamines in the morning to get away so she can do her chores. A little second all at night so that she can get sleep. Face it, if your kid sees you and your neighbors getting all your thrills, why shouldn't he get his? Uh, well, this may be a bad example, but there is a big difference between pills and, and, and something like heroin. Pills and heroin. A big difference between, eh? Let's just have a little look at reality, huh, lady? Mm. I'll look away from it. This is where you start. It's ornate spatules, dexamil spatules, escatrol, uppers, and downs, right through here. So it's a very short trip to go up here to the reef and throw at school, you know? This is how it comes into the country in the bricks, but let's throw the school this way. This is the plan to grow your own, dig it? And the uh, best papers in the world made right here. Maybe you're into glue snipping. That's good. Oh. Don't turn away, lady. Face reality. This is King, King Heroin. Look, lady, King Heroin. Some of them cost five dollars a bag, and pray God they better have one grain of real heroin in it, or your kids will get sick. And these are the works. They make them themselves. They're ingenious. They make them out of baby pacifiers. That's a homemade needle. They always fit best in a Marlboro box, because it's square. And over here, you just have a little heater, bottle cap. You just burn a little heroin in that with some water, and you suck it up with that little Hypodermic needle, and just jab it, lady. Then you get to the king of all kings. She's such a king, they call her a lady. Cocaine. Sweet cocaine, right? And she's so sweet and she's so fine, they even dip her out with a, a little nail file. Put some on a, on a gold spoon. So all you gotta do is sniff out your septum. 
and maybe you want to reduce your habit. Maybe you think you can. So you try to get on a methadone maintenance program. There's a long list of people waiting. So you buy some from a guy who makes his own. So you can maintain on some kinds of methadone. But we've had 114 methadone overdose deaths this year. And not only that, methadone just makes another kind of junkie. Innocence in the suburbs? Not quite. In fact, this is where some of the largest drug importers and dealers live, in the most exclusive areas. This is where some of the biggest drug caches and the big money are found. Many of the drugs imported through the suburbs stay in the suburbs. This is a fairly typical summer festival, with hash, uppers, downers, and what have you, openly changing hands. A celebration of life, and possibly death. If not illness, bodily damage, or death, many suburban drug users have suffered arrest and imprisonment. But being from the more affluent segments of society and living in smaller communities, they often are able to get off with reduced sentences or probation, and often their records are mysteriously erased, ensuring them the clean credentials they will need to enjoy the good life, if they make it. It's the disenfranchised, whites and blacks, the poor of our society that are hardest hit by the menace of drugs. It is the alienated, the jobless, the hopeless who turn to drugs to numb their daily pain. When their habit finally claims them, they unfortunately cannot afford the expensive funerals. We tried to achieve a balance between the inner city and the suburbs in making this film. And when we got to the suburbs, we found certain strange things. We found that we could find very few, if any, pictures of suburban youths who had overdosed from narcotics. And it began to look, and may be in fact, a truth that maybe physicians write down instead of narcotics overdose, or oh, endocarditis, athletics heart, peritonitis, or what have you. And pictures strangely disappeared from morgues, etc. And uh, they seem to have fewer. So they won't face the problem, which means they can never deal with it, which is kind of sad. No matter where it starts, in the drug traffic on the streets, in the classrooms of our cities and suburbs, or under the guise of legitimate purchases at the corner drugstore, drug abuse has consequences, emphatic and ugly consequences. A prescription for her mother, she said, but it was for her, for getting high. The prescription never made it home. Will she make it home? Maybe this time, but what about the next time? Once trapped by a drug habit, the only way home is through help. Help from parents and friends or crisis clinics, doctors, therapy programs. We all need each other if the bad trips of abuse and addiction are to be eliminated. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you. Many people seem to think that drugs have some respect for the young. Twelve minutes before his ninth birthday, his friends brought him a present, some heroin. It killed him. Cleaning fluid or airplane glue and a plastic bag, an eternal high. Junkies steal to support their habits. This transformer put a 12,000 volt jolt through his sneaker. He was nine when he died. No, drugs have no respect for the young, and more and more young people are dying every day. Many kids don't know what they're doing, and many parents don't either. Is your child the one you love? Is he on something? Have you checked him out recently? Hmm? Are you living with a junkie? Here's some things you might look for. Distinct change in the personality nodding in front of the TV set, blood stains on the bathroom floor, sink walls, hanging around with known drug addicts, unexplained absence from the home, loss of appetite, scratching, money missing from the home, loss of weight, glassine bags and burnt out bottle caps on the bathroom floor, Exiting from the bathroom, rearranging his clothing. That is, putting his belt 
back on his pants and not where they were on his arm, where he twisted that belt so he could find a vein to smack in the drugs. Glassy look in the eye. I hope you don't find those symptoms in your kid. Marijuana smoking results in red or bloodshot eyes, lack of visual acuity, either quiet or giggly behavior. It is often accompanied by a craving for sweets. But the most dangerous thing about marijuana is that it may be laced with hashish oil, cocaine, heroin, or opium. These drugs lead straight to addiction. Barbiturates, or downers, produce slow, repetitive speech patterns. Slips of the memory might be noticed with a tendency to fall asleep, nod out, all too often permanently. The various amphetamines, speed or uppers, produce fast and incessant speech patterns. Speeders often stay up days at a time without sleeping and then fall into extreme fatigue, severe depressions, or suicide. But the ravages of addiction are often much more conspicuous and horrendous. What kind of a mind makes you do this to your own body in the name of joy? The junkie mind. The mind completely at the mercy of the habit. A junkie no longer has the human capacity to feel for himself or others. He'll take the abscesses, the disease, the pain, the disfigurement. He'll stick the needle any place in his body, any place that will get him high. This is not a flower. It's an ulcerated, unhealed hole in a man's leg. He doesn't have to look for a place to put the needle. He just throws in the raw heroin or other drugs. Other damage is not so conspicuous. This is the heart of a heavy drug user, infected and inflamed from impurities in the drugs and dirty needles and spoons. The metal instrument points up the affected area in the center. This is an example of a perforated septum. The metal instrument goes in one nostril and comes out the other, passing through a hole in the tissue that usually separates them. This is caused by sniffing, snorting, or tooting cocaine, the clean drug. It granulates the septum and it falls out. And by that time, your life is nearly gone or you wish it was. She was sniffing heroin and cocaine. She overdosed and died. Some drug abusers die fast. Some die slowly. They almost always die alone, sometimes reaching out for a telephone in a last desperate attempt to reach someone to reach help. What kind of help? By burning his foot and leg with a butane lighter, this man's friends tried to help him wake up from a methaqualude overdose. He never woke up. Junkies know they're beautiful people. With every day and every high, they become more beautiful more way out, more together, more turned on, more hip. The rest of the world sees the glazed eyes, the nodding out, the sickness. They see the dangerous craving, always looking for the easy rip-off, the next hit. The only people who don't see are parents who refuse to see, and the other junkie friends. Everybody else knows that the junkie is walking death, looking for a place to die. And when they die, junkies become embarrassments to their so-called friends. So junkies take care of their own, in their own grand style, maybe tied between two mattresses thrown on the highway, dumped in a trunk, or given a first-class burial in the trunk of a car. I don't know of any junkies who started out with this end in mind but this is where almost all of them manage to find themselves, somewhere on the ladder of death, diseased, disfigured, brain and body damaged beyond repair, a lonely corpse thrown away on the street. So you see, dead is dead. A five-year-old child, blind from birth, asked me, what is the color of the wind? And I thought and I said, it has no color. It moves too fast. And I ask you, what is the color of death? It has no color. It moves too fast. Dead is dead. If someone, even your best friend, tries to sell you some smack, coke, hash, grass, horse,
speed, sleeping pills, barbiturates, reds, rainbows, quals, dexies, hearts, yellow jackets, purple hearts, jelly beans, uppers or downers, or any kind of drug. Don't take it or buy it. Tell your parents or call your local law enforcement agency. Remember, it may save yours or some other kid's life. Parents have a responsibility too. They must boycott products from Turkey, France, West Germany, Southeast Asia, or any place that ships us narcotics that kill our kids. Write congressmen to cut aid to such countries. Write foreign embassies and missions. Tell them that as long as they allow the powders of death to cross their borders or to be produced within their land, and its destination is the United States, we will not financially support the killers of our youth. Parents must read books such as The Politics of Heroin in Southeast Asia by Alfred W. McCoy, a Yale professor, published by Harper and Rowe and find out how even some of our own government agencies and departments are contributing to drug trafficking internationally and domestically in the name of political expediency. Parents must finally realize that methadone is at best a three to six month stopgap therapy, which can only be a failure because it creates another kind of drug dependence. Methadone overdoses average over 100 per year. So if it can kill you or make you into another kind of junkie, how good can it be? Also, we must write, plead, and demand of our local, state, and federal governments that they adopt the TIP program, Turn In a Pusher. This program has been adopted in New York State Riverside, California, Tampa, Florida, Michigan, and several other cities and states. You use the phone and are given a special code to protect your identity. And if on the basis of your information, a capture, conviction, and confiscation of drugs occurs, you receive a percentage of the money value of the confiscated drugs. For example, 10% of the haul in the popular movie, The French Connection, would have meant a reward of $3.2 million to the tipper. Money talks. But until this program comes to your area, contact your nearest office of the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration or the Justice Department or your local law enforcement agency. Fight back and you will live and survive. Times have now arrived in this nation. There's now a people with a different relation. Black and white, yellow, red and blue. All in the same thing. We know it's true. They just stole your kids. 